Well, T.O.P., God bless you. It is so good to see you on this Sunday morning. We are in a brand new month. Can you believe it? We are in October now. We are in the last quarter of the year. But thank God that we have a testimony that we are still here. And it's only because of the grace of God. Hallelujah. Listen, we're going to be starting a new series this month. And God has really put it on my heart to talk to you from the life of Nehemiah. We're going to study the book of Nehemiah and we're going to get some great, great uh, snippets from Nehemiah's life on how we can apply it to our life. And so the message that I want to preach to you all today comes from the book of Nehemiah. But we're going to tag this message. It's time to work. Hallelujah. It's time to work. Well, let's go into the word. All right. And let's see what we could get out of this life of Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter four, verse six. We're going to use this as our foundation scripture for this teaching. Here's what he says. So built we the wall and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof for the people had a mind to work. The people had a mind to work. I just really believe that in this season that God is calling us to do a specific work right now. And I'm going to be teaching you from the life of Nehemiah how we can apply his work ethic to our lives so that we can see the results that God wants to see in our lives. You know, when I was growing up at home, I grew up around strong work people. My mother, my father, they worked. My dad worked all night on the bus line. And my mother was a teacher and a music teacher and an educator. And she did all kind of things but they both worked hard, not only in the home, but they worked hard in the church. And I picked up that work ethic, me and my brothers and sisters, we picked up that work ethic, be watching them work in the home and work in the church. And what I found out today is that a lot of people really don't want to work hard anymore. A lot of folks just want stuff given over to them. But you know what? I'm here to let you know that if you want anything in life and if you want anything to manifest in your life, it's going to require some work. And sometimes it's going to require some hard work. You know, there was a scripture they quoted to me when I was little coming up in church uh, out of the book of Second Thessalonians 3 and 10. And it says this, those unwilling to work will not get to eat. Some of y'all remember that scripture. They used to tell you, if you don't work, you don't eat. You know what they were saying? Listen, if you're not willing to put in the hard work, you're not going to reap the benefits, come on, of working. And I want y'all to look at that scripture because he says this. He says those unwilling to work. We're not talking about people that are got laid off or something tragic happening in your life and you can't work. But we're talking about people that don't have a willing heart to work. One of the things I'm thankful for at Tabernacle of Praise is we have people, I mean, that want to work for the kingdom and want to work for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And there's anything that we need to do now. We need to develop a work ethic for what God wants us to do and for what we have been called to do in the earth. You know, if we look up that word work, work means this to put forth an effort or to be productive. You know, we got a lot of people that are doing things, but they're not being productive. They're not putting forth an effort. And in this season, God has given all of us an assignment on this earth. And God is holding you accountable now to do something with what he's empowered you to do, with what he's anointing you to do. Some of y'all are called to work in the church. Some of y'all are called to work outside of the church. Some of y'all are called to work in the education system. Some of y'all are called to work in the government system. But whatever God has called you to do, come on now, you need to put some effort so that way God, come on, can manifest his purpose in your life. I'm here to let you know that when you start working and when you start putting forth an effort to do what God has called you to do, you will be surprised how God will put his super on your natural and cause some crazy things to happen in your life. And when I say crazy, I'm not talking about bad. I'm talking about crazy good. I'm talking about opportunities. I'm talking about things that will just happen in your life because God has a way of getting behind what you're doing and making all things work well. Praise God. Matter of fact, the Bible says this in Deuteronomy 28 verse 12. The New Living Translation says this, the Lord will send the rain at the proper time from his rich treasury in the heavens and will bless all the work you do. Did y'all hear that? I'm here to report to you and to declare over your life that God is about to bless everything you put your hands to do. Glory be to God. Am I talking to somebody that knows that you are anointed to do something, that knows that you are empowered to do something, that knows that God has 
an assignment on your life. Come on now. And this is your time to get busy and do everything that he's called you to do. And guess what? You're not going to be out there by yourself because God says, I will anoint it. Come on. I will bless it. Everything you put your hands to do, it will work in the name of Jesus. I wish I had somebody on this morning that knows that God has an assignment on my life. And what I got to do is put my hands to the plow and start working and doing what God has called me to do. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You need to ask yourself the question, what does God call me to do? What is my assignment? What is my purpose? What has he put in my heart, in my life for me to do? And what I got to do is go to work. Glory be to God. You got to go to work. Come on, somebody. Listen, I was watching the, uh, the basketball playoffs and, and they be, sometimes they call plays for LeBron James uh, when everybody just clears out. And LeBron is at the top of the key with the basketball. And the commentator says this, okay, everybody's clearing out. LeBron's about to go to work. That means that everybody get out the way because I'm about to make a move to go right to this basket. Come on, and we're going to score. We're going to win the game. Can I help you with something? I believe that God, hallelujah, is putting a ball in your hand right now. Come on, some of y'all are saying we're in the midst of a crazy time, Pastor. We're in the midst of a pandemic. But when it's crazy, when it's chaotic, that's when God shows himself strong. And all I'm telling you, he's putting a ball in your hands and this is the time for you to go to work if you believe what i'm saying just write that in go to work come on facebook write it in youtube write it in if you're on the website or the app come on declare it right now go to work this is the time for you to go to work whatever god has called you to do this is the time for you to go to work in the name of jesus and whatever is blocking you or whatever is hindering you in this season from doing the work god has called you to do tell it to move out your way hallelujah i told you how lebron would tell people clear out the way this is me i got to do this thing. Come on. I'm declaring over your life that whatever has been hindering you or blocking you from doing what God has called you to do. Come on. Move it out the way. Come on. Anger. We're moving you out the way. Come on. Hatred. We're moving you out the way. Come on. Anything that's keeping you laziness or procrastination. We're moving it out the way right now. Bitterness or jealousy. Come on. Unforgiveness. We're moving it out the way. Any type of rejection, any type of fear or stress that has happened in your life. We're going to move it out the way because it's time to go to work in this season. I'm not going to let nothing or no one hinder the work. Come on. That God has called me to do. In the name of Jesus, I feel like I'm encouraging somebody right now. Come on, let's get into the story about Nehemiah so you can understand what I'm talking about today, because I believe that this is a prophetic word for you right now. See, Nehemiah in this in this uh, book right now, he is serving in a Persian empire under a king now. And Nehemiah is one of the Jews that has been summoned to serve the king as a cupbearer. All right. His job is to serve as a cupbearer. He's been given the task. All right. To bring the wine to the king. And what he has to do, he has to taste the wine to make sure that the wine tastes good, to make sure that it's OK, to make sure there's nothing in it that can harm the king. And when he tastes it, then he gives it to the king. The king trusts the uh, cupbearer so much that he's willing to take. Come on. What Nehemiah gives him because he trusts that Nehemiah has tasted it and everything is OK. That is. Is Nehemiah's job, but I want you to see now how his job pushes him into his destiny. Some of y'all don't even understand that God has put you strategically in places, not so that you can stay there, but it's going to push you into your destiny in the name of Jesus. Even though he was in the king's court, he didn't forget where he came from. Even though Nehemiah was serving the king, he understood, all right, where he came from. I'm sad to report to you that we have a lot of people that have forgotten where they come from. They've forgotten the things that God has brought them through. They've forgotten the bridges that brought them over. They've forgot the times where they didn't have nothing. And now they're in the king's palace, but they've forgotten where they come from. But thank God for Nehemiah, because Nehemiah said, I will not forget. Come on, where I've come from. I will not forget my brothers and sisters. I will not forget. Come on, the environment that I came from. I didn't make it here all by myself. It was through the grace and the mercy of God. I need somebody that you're living pretty good now and you're doing pretty good right now. But I need you to understand, don't forget where you come from. Don't get so high and haughty on yourself that you forget that it was God that brought you from where you were at to where you are at right now in the name of Jesus. Listen, Nehemiah, he said, listen, I'm serving in the king's palace, but my mind is with my brothers and sisters. I need to know what's going on with them. And the Bible records this in Nehemiah chapter one, verse two through four, the Bible says, Hanani, one of his brothers, came to visit me with some other men who had just arrived from Judah. I asked them about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about how things were going in Jerusalem. 
they said to me, things are not going well for those who return to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. When I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted and prayed to the God of heaven. You see Nehemiah right now. Nehemiah asked the question, how is everybody doing back home? What's going on with everybody? And when he heard the report, when he heard the report that the walls were torn down and that the city was uh, burning and that uh, the people were in disgrace, the Bible says that he began to fast and weep. Uh, listen, if there's one characteristic, amen, I want you to get from Nehemiah is this characteristic, compassion compassion. Compassion is this, having a feeling of deep sympathy and sorry for someone who is suffering. When you know you're called to do something, what God will do, he will give you a compassion for that. He will give you a compassion for something, come on, that God has called you to do. God has called Nehemiah to the people. But the first thing he does, he gives him a compassion, a heart. If there's one thing that we are lacking right now in this country and in this nation is compassion a lack of sympathy for those that are hurting, for those that are struggling, for those that are suffering. Listen, we don't have to agree on everything. Listen, there are people on the right side and people on the left side. They all got valid arguments. But if there's one thing we need to agree on, that we need to have compassion, come on now, for people who are suffering, compassion for people who are going through hard times. This level of compassion drove Nehemiah to his knees and he began to pray a prayer of repentance. Lord, have mercy. If there's anything that we need right now, we need some repentance. We need some people to pray. We need some people to call on the name of the Lord and say, Lord, we've messed up. Lord, we've gone too far. Come on. I'm not just talking about people on the outside of the church, but I'm talking about people on the inside of the church. Come on. We need to get on our knees and repent and say, Lord, all this that we are experiencing is because we have not done what you have called us to do. Look what the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. He says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin listen to this and will heal their land what is the biggest problem that we're facing right now we're facing COVID-19 we're facing a pandemic but I believe the remedy right here is in the scripture if we turn if we ask God to forgive us come on if we repent amen from our evil ways and the things that we have done I believe God can release healing in this land. Do I got somebody that believes that? Hallelujah. Listen, what we need to do now is we need to take on that characteristic of Nehemiah. Come on and say, I need to have compassion. We need to have compassion for what's going on in our world, what's going on in our communities. Hallelujah. Listen, after he prayed this prayer, glory be to God, then we're going to pick up on the second characteristic because not only did Nehemiah have compassion, but then he was compelled. Hallelujah. He was compelled. What does compelled mean? To force or to drive to submit. In other words, God's spirit was compelling Nehemiah. Now that you are aware of what's going on in the city, now that you're aware of what's going on back home, now you need to do something. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. If there's anything that's going to drive you to work, hallelujah. If there's anything that's going to drive you to do something, it's when you are compelled. When you are compelled to do something, it forces you to get out of the bed. It forces you to read a book and study. It forces you to take action. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Nehemiah verse, or 1 verse 11 says this. He says this. In those days, I was the king's cupbearer. I, I, I don't want you to miss this because here's what Nehemiah said. He said this. Now that I have a call to do something, he says, I recognize who I am. At the end of the prayer, he says, I am the king's cupbearer. In other words, he understands, wait a minute, I have favor with the king. I have been strategically placed with the king. That means I have influence and I can change what's going on back home. Lord have mercy. Glory be to God. I'm here to report to you that you have been strategically placed right now. Come on. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you're doing, but you need to understand. Some of y'all are asking the question, how did I end up here? How did I end up with this position? How did I end 
end up at this job? How did I end up in this city? How did I end up over here? It's because God strategically placed you in that position because he wants something to change. Hallelujah. And it's time for you to go to work. It's time for you sitting around watching everybody do the work, but it's time for you to get involved and to do something. What has God called you to do? He strategically placed you in a position right now. You didn't get there by accident. Come on, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He put you, divinely put you in this position so that you can be a change in in your society. God placed Nehemiah as a cupbearer. Come on. He gave him favor with the king so that he can ask the king something. Hallelujah. I'm here to report to you that you got favor. Hallelujah. You got favor. Nehemiah recognized, wait a minute, I got favor now. I could do something with this. Hallelujah. Can I report to you that the reason why you went through what you went through was because the favor of God is on you? I need you to understand that God has an assignment on your life and you got favor to complete the assignment. You got favor to do what God has called you to do. You got favor to fulfill every assignment, every dream, every vision that God has given you. Stop waiting for somebody else to do it. God is calling you to do it. Come on, I declare decree that you got the spirit of Nehemiah on you and it's time to go to work. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, you have compassion for it. Come on, you are compelled to do it. It's time for you to do something. If I'm talking to somebody, somebody just declare decree favor. Come on, just say it on the screen. Put it on the screen. Favor. Come on, favor. You two Type it in. Come on. Favor. Facebook. Type it in. You all that are watching right now. Declare decree. I got favor. Come on now. God didn't put me here just so I could be here, but I got favor on my life to accomplish what he called me to do. Praise God. I, I, I got to be transparent with you and let you know something because, amen, as God began to expand this ministry and God began to expand the church, amen, I began to ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do with the influence you're giving me? What do you want me to do with the favor you're giving me? You didn't just put favor on me so we could just grow a big church, but there's an assignment. You're giving me influence. Come on, in my city and in my county, in my region. Why? For me to do something. Amen. And two, two and a half years ago, a young man in our congregation was assaulted by the police. Amen. I didn't really understand, amen, what God was doing in me. Amen. But now I'm standing here two and a half years later, and now I understand, amen, that God was preparing me for this moment right now. He was preparing the church for this moment right now, that we are going to be a beacon of light in this community, that we are going to be, amen, we are going to be the template for change in this community. Are y'all listening to me? Praise God. God used that situation, come on, to strategically position me in this position so that way we can lead our church and lead our community to cause change in this region. All I'm telling you right now is that sometimes God will cause some things to happen to strategically push, position you so that you can take care of the assignment that's on your life. Hallelujah. Praise God. But I need to be honest with you because you need to understand that sometimes the assignment can drive you to depression. Sometimes the weight of the assignment can cause you to get so overwhelmed. Amen. That you go through a season of sadness and depression because you don't know how you're going to do it. And you started you start reasoning things with your own mind. And I just feel like that even in this pandemic, there are some people that, you know, you have something that you're supposed to do. But depression has overtaken you. Sadness has overtaken you. Grief has overtaken you. Some of us have lost loved ones and we haven't gotten out of it. Some things we've lost. Come on. Some material things we've lost. Jobs we've lost. We've had to stay inside for a certain period of time and depression and sadness and grief has overwhelmed us. And uh, there's a lot of us, even though we're filled with the Holy Spirit, depression has had its way in our life. I want you to see how this affected Nehemiah because Nehemiah chapter two, verse two, the New Living Translation says this. So the king asked me, why are you looking so sad? You don't look sick to me. You must be deeply troubled. I looked it up in the message translation. Look what he says. Why the long face? You're not sick, are you? Or are you depressed? Come on. He asked them a question. What's going on with you? Are you depressed? Listen, the reason why this over had overtook Nehemiah's spirit is because he spent four months dwelling on this, thinking about this. He heard the report in November, but now we're in March or April. And now he's been going over this for months. He's been going over the way things used to be when he was back at home. He's been going over his friends and his family's going through the things that they're going through. And let me help you with something. Sometimes you could dwell on something so long that it overtakes your countenance. You could dwell on something so long, come on, that it shifts your character. All I'm telling you right now is this is the time, amen, that God has put an assignment 
assignment on your life and you can no longer keep dwelling on your past, keep dwelling on the way things used to be, keep dwelling on what things have happened in your past. Listen, this is the time for you to move forward because the assignment is calling you. Come on, the anointing is calling you. The work is calling you and you can no longer keep rehearsing what didn't happen and what did happen, but you got to keep on moving forward. Hallelujah. Come on now. I want to give you some things about depression because depression, I was reading uh, online uh, from this website, Hope for Depression, and it says depression, amen, causes, affects over 18 million adults per year. It says that it's the primary reason why someone dies of suicide. Are y'all listening to me? He says depression affects 300 million people worldwide. It's the leading cause of disability. It's a major contributor to global burden of disease. Symptoms that come out of depression are sickness, disability, overweight and obesity, postpartum depression, come on, bipolar disease, anxiety disorder, and even suicide. And I need you to understand that in studying this, this, amen. It was suggested that those that suffer with depression started from a negative experience, which was rehearsed emotionally, therefore keeping that person in that state of mind. Are y'all listening to me? This was rehearsed over and over again, driving that person to suicide, driving that person to obesity, driving that person to all the, th all the symptoms that come out of that. And all I'm telling you right now is that God wants to free you from grief, from sadness and depression. Matter of fact, the Bible says in Isaiah 43 18 and 19 he says forget about what's happened glory be to God don't keep going over old history be alert and be present why because I'm about to do something brand new it's bursting out don't you see it there it is how many y'all see it right now how many y'all see God doing something in your life hallelujah then what you need to do is stop rehearsing what hurt you stop rehearsing who hurt you stop rehearsing what things used to be like I know we all are looking back and say, well, you know, before this pandemic, I had this. And before this pandemic, it was like this. But you can't keep rehearsing that because if you keep rehearsing, it's going to drive you in depression. There is an anointing on your life. There is an assignment on your life. There is a purpose for your life. And what you got to do is you got to say the devil is a liar. Come on. God is going to turn what he meant for evil and he's going to work it for my good in the name of Jesus. So I'm not going to meditate. I'm not going to keep rehearsing what hurt me or who hurt me. I am moving forward. Matter of fact, Philippians 4 verse 8 says, summing it all up, friends, I say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things that are true and noble and reputable and authentic and compelling and gracious. The best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise and not things to curse. I'm telling you right now, if you could just change your mind and know that God is on your side, you can move forward in the assignment that God has called you to do. Look what Nehemiah does. Hallelujah. Nehemiah comes out of that depression and he starts talking talking to the king. Look what he says. He, uh, he, he, he replies, long live the king. How can I not be sad for the city where my ancestors are buried is ru in ruins and the gates have been destroyed by fire. The king asks, well, how can I help you? Do y'all see how the thing switch? With a prayer to the God of heaven, he replies, if it please the king and if you are pleased with me, your servant, send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. Did you all see what just happened? Hallelujah. God took that depression and turned it into his deliverance. Praise God. When Nehemiah shifted out of that and understood that the favor of God was resting on him. Come on. He talked to the king and because he had favor with the king. Hallelujah. The king did not only grant him his request but he gave him the resources to fulfill the assignment. Ooh, y'all ain't happy up in here. There is an assignment on your life. Hallelujah. But God has strategically given you favor and every resource that you need. I need you to understand that it's on the way. Hallelujah. The king gave Nehemiah the wood that he needed. He gave him the papers that he needed to go to the country. He even gave him an escort. Come on. So nobody would hurt or harm him on his way to rebuild the city. All I'm telling you right now is that this is your moment moment to get to work. This is your moment to take care of that assignment that God has given you. I know in the midst of a pandemic, we sit around and let's just wait till this thing pass over. No, the devil is a liar. We not wait till it pass over. Come on, you're going to step up to the plate and do what God
God has called you to do. Are y'all listening to me? Hallelujah. Somebody here got an assignment and it's time for you to get to work. I told you now, the first thing Nehemiah had was compassion. The next thing he was compelled. But here's the last thing. He was convinced. <laughs> he was convinced. Convinced means to be fully persuaded. Check him out when he gets to going. He looks at the walls and he sees what's going on and he becomes convinced that this is what he's called to do. Look at Nehemiah 2 verse 17 and 18. He says, you know very well what trouble we are in. Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire. Look what he says. Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and end this disgrace. Then I told them about how the gracious hand of God had been on me and about my conversation with the king. They replied at once, yes, let's rebuild the wall. So they began the good work. I feel like somebody, hallelujah, right now under the sound of my voice, you know that you got an assignment on your life and it's time to get to work. You see what's happening in our communities. You see what's happening in the education system. You see what's happening in the government. You see what's happening with your own family. You see what's happening with the church. You see what's happening in our communities. Come on, God has given you an assignment. You may can't solve all the problems, but there's one part of the problem that you can solve and it's time out for waiting for all the preachers to do it. Come on, let's all the believers put your hand to the plow. It's time to work. It's not time to watch. It's time to work. Hallelujah. He was fully persuaded. He was convinced that this was his call. Don't let anyone or anything stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Hallelujah. Look at Romans chapter 4 verse 20 and 21. Abraham, the Bible talks about Abraham, says he didn't stagger at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Do I got anybody up in here that knows that even in the midst of a pandemic, even in the midst of chaos, come on, God is faithful and he will allow you to manifest what he has promised to do in your life. All I'm telling you is that you got work to do. Come on, we got to take on the spirit of Nehemiah. We see the disgrace. We see what's going on. But instead of us scrolling and watching, let's put our hands to the plow. Let's do something. Lord, what do you have anointed me to do? Lord, what have you called me to do? It's time for me to get to work. Come on, it's time for somebody to start that ministry. Let's go to work. It's time for somebody to start that business. Let's go to work. It's time for somebody to start that nonprofit. Let's go to work. Come on, it's time for somebody to open up that shelter. Let's go to work. It's time for somebody to write that strategy book. Let's go to work. It's time for somebody, come on, to get in the education system and fix it. Let's go to work. It's time for somebody, hallelujah, to go back to school and get educated so you can get all the things that you need to finish the assignment on your life. All I'm telling you is time to work. It's time to go to work. And I believe that I'm talking to somebody that knows that this is your moment, that knows that this is your season, and it's time for you to do the work that God has called you to do. If there's anything we can learn from this pandemic, we can learn that we are called to do more than just come to church. Because when the church shuts down, now we got to take on the assignment that God has called us to do. You know what I had to do? I had to build up my faith, y'all. I had to build up my faith and say, Lord, I believe in what you have called me to do. I believe in what you have anointed me to do. This is my moment and this is my time. I need to ask the question, do you believe? Do you believe in what God has put in your heart to do, to put in your hands to do? Stop doubting yourself and start resting in the favor of God. Nehemiah had compassion. Nehemiah felt compelled. And then Nehemiah felt convinced that this was his time to move from being a cupbearer to being a rebuilder. And all I'm telling you is that God has put an assignment on your life. It's time for you to do it. Believe in your God. Believe in yourself. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Mark 9, chapter 23, Jesus was talking to the disciples. And look what he says at the end part of that. He says, anything is possible if a person believes. Do you believe? Anything is possible if we can believe. I'm declaring that over your life. It's time to get to work. It's time to do what God has called you to do. All you got to do is believe in what God has put in your life to do. I declare it and I decree it over your life. In Jesus' name.